Hello everyone and welcome to this week's episode of We Are The Bonsai Supply. This is Mari and I am Jerome. Earlier today we had a live Q&A on Brazil and Rain Trees on Zoom and we'd like to share with you some clips of it. Let's go check it out. Anthony, you always have those cool backgrounds. So I might have to change my background too. Yeah, by the way, Anthony, we'll talk about that. By the way, Anthony's in Florida, not in Colorado, just so you guys know. Yeah, that was just a shot from the porch in, <laughs> in uh, actually uh, Lake Tahoe. I'm going to switch this. Okay, so about this now? My, qu my question, this is, I have uh, two, two rain trees here. This one and this okay. one probably could get, use a better background. My, question, my first question is these flowers. It's full of flowers. They don't last very long. They're not that much. Is it better for the tree if I cut the flowers off? Will it add to the growth? Yes. Um, so in any... Um, situation where tree flowers or produces fruit when you develop your tree i i do not allow my trees to flower and fruit i take the flower buds off as soon as they start to form because too much okay. energy goes into the flowers now in your case i see that the flowers are old right they're dark yellow they're already past the blooming stage i would manually remove them because if you leave them on the tree the tree tries to um, put energy into getting rid of those flowers so I would just manually uh, pluck them off. Thanks, Jerome. Hey, um, so Lovejoy is asking, can you discuss more the specifics to the foliation? For example, do I leave part of the stem or cut it back to the branch? I have a pre bonsai. Okay, so the specifics of the foliation. Um, why do we defoliate, right? There's a couple different reasons. Um, number one, for instance, if you forget to water your tree, and you come out to your tree and you see all the branches are hanging down, all the leaves are, are uh, uh, weeping down, right? Because they don't have enough water. That's a good time to defoliate the tree. Or if you have a lot of burnt leaves, defoliate the tree because the tree is spending too much energy in trying to recover those leaves. But those two situations should technically never occur, right? Because you always want to make sure your tree gets enough water. Other than that, defoliating your tree for a beneficial uh, with benefit is to get smaller leaves and to get more branches and also to increase the vigor and the health of the tree. Every time you defoliate your tree, your tree comes back with so much more power and it brings back so much more leaves and branches, especially if you've ever wondered how we get branches so close to the trunk, right? Instead of having them f far out, that can only be achieved through defoliation. Now, you cannot defoliate any species, like evergreens I would not defoliate, or uh, like juniper pines, conifers, I, you cannot defoliate because um, that would not end well. But tropical trees, um, deciduous trees, you want to defoliate. Now, some trees you can defoliate twice in the year, like deciduous trees. I would start to defoliate them in the fall as the leaf turns. And once you see uh, the first leaf starting to drop, from the fall color change, that's when it's a good time to defoliate. The second time is in the middle of the summertime when the deciduous trees go into a dormant period for about 30 days. So in Florida, where we used to be in Fort Lauderdale, that used to be July. Now I'm up here in Georgia, up here in Georgia, go out, when is that uh, dormant period? And then defoliate your trees again. Um, you can also do a partial defoliation uh, if your tree is not that vigorous and strong, just to be sure. But on tropical trees, if they're healthy, I would do a full defoliation. Okay, perfect. And it was getting really hot, so I, I moved to San Francisco. Um, <laughs> so continue. I'm going to unmute Mauricio now. Mauricio, you are unmuted. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Perfect, okay, thank you guys for doing this call. Of so this is my tree, okay. you can see it very well. I can see it. Um, my question has to do with air layering. So how small or how big does the branch have to be in order to air layer it? 
is your question how big does the cut have to be around the bark or how thick the branch has to be to, in order for you to air layer it? Mm, I guess both, but most both? Okay. thick. <laughs> um, that's, you can air layer any size branch, pretty much. Like in Florida, I have air layered a, uh, a fire bush that had a, a branch this thick and I air layered it just to try it and it worked. Uh, if you use the right uh, proper technique, you can air layer any size. There's no branch that's too small. Like if you have a branch that's uh, lateral in your case, that's maybe, let's say, smaller than my pinky in the diameter, that yeah. you can just uh, use as a cutting. Just cut it off and plant it and that will re regrow. Anything larger than this, I would air layer. So for like Brazilian rain trees, do they cut, do they make cut or cuttings easy to, to make into? Yes. Yes, but you have to take them out from the branches, from the branch tips. You cannot uh, take a cutting off of the trunk. I have heard of some people that have just cut off large parts of Brazilian rain trees and they potted them and they actually started to grow again. The only problem okay. with that is if you're not air layering, you're not going to get a good radial root spread, right? Because you only get roots that come out of one side of the trunk and not all the way around, which is what you want to develop mm -hmm. that nice root spread. And in terms of um, how thick of a rim you want to cut around, I would say in your rain tree, I would say probably like an inch to two inches, like thickness. If like when I was air layering this big piece right here, I, I, I think I cut a bandwidth of like a foot around it. So the bigger the branch or the bigger the tree, the more space you have to leave in between. Okay. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. So okay. you're this, it would be easier just to cut it. They're like super thin, but I don't want to throw them. Are you, are you air layering the trunk or the branches? The branch. If Can I, you show, how thick is it? See this one i think that one you can just cut it off and just plant it um when you take a cutting defoliate the branch the cutting mm -hmm. and i like to use a rooting hormone i like to use the uh, dynagrow one uh, we also have that one on our Amazon page too. Um, that one works really well. You just dip the end into the, the rooting hormone and then you just plant it. Keep okay. it in the shade outside until new growth uh, starts to sprout and then you can move it out into full sun. Okay, thank you. Of course. Okay, awesome. I'm going just to read a question from the chat. What type of fertilizer is the best for these trees? Joe is asking yeah. joe um so at the bonsai supply for uh non-flowering trees we use an 18 for 10 uh chemical fertilizer um high nitrogen and for flowering trees we use a 6 8 10. Um, both of these fertilizers are our private labels that we use and i use everywhere um and i use these two fertilizers throughout the entire development of the tree now, once the tree reaches a stage of like the rain tree or like the elm, that's when I use a fertilizer that has smaller numbers. But until you get to that stage with your tree, you want to use as much nitrogen as you can, high firepower, because you want your tree to grow, right? And when you use a fertilizer that has high nitrogen, you're developing your tree so much faster. And the soil that we use and the fertilizer they both uh, work together because the pine bark that we have in our soil absorbs the fertilizer when you fertilize, right? And then it releases it back to the tree as needed. Because when you use like a, uh, an organic fertilizer or like a liquid fertilizer, the liquid drains right through the bottom. So all you do there is you fertilize the weeds on the ground or the grass. And organic fertilizers, we only use for pines or junipers or something that is very, very old and does not me need such a punch anymore. But on the rain tree, I'm still using the high nitrogen. I would, I, I'd imagine in probably like five to 10 years, I might switch to an organic maybe, but right now I still want that punch in my tree. Okay, uh, before I go? I have to move, it's starting to rain. Oh. Okay. <laughs> 
So we have a of rain. Actual. Um, okay. okay. Do some announcement while I get situated. <laughs> and there is some question. There are some questions in the chat, so I'm gonna go over them. Uh, when is the best time to repot a Brazilian rain tree? Will it stun the growth of the tree if we slip pot? No, uh, stunting the growth. Uh, if you slip pot it into a bigger tree, no. Uh, I mean, into a bigger pot. I'm sorry. So if you slip pot it into a bigger pot, no. But it's not going to stunt the growth when you do that, but there's no real reason why you would want to slip pot a Brazilian rain tree unless it's not the right time of the year and your rain tree is not really healthy. Slip pot it into a much larger container and fill the outsides with good bonsai soil. So let's see. He says, at what approximate age do the trunks start to twist and flake bark? Mm. Okay. So the, the trunks, uh, I'm not sure if all of you guys or some of you guys have taken the uh, online boot camp of Brazilian rain tree. It's a class that I put together and I go really, I go very much into detail in between the two types of rain trees. So one is a fluting one, which creates those grooves like the one that I have. And the other one is a round, round the trunk rain tree. So you can tell from a very early age on, I would say probably two years, once the uh, seed or seedling is two years old, they already start to uh, twist and move. So you can tell the difference at a very, very early age on. Now, in terms of the bark flaking, that happens as your tree starts to grow. Okay, and I'm guessing that can also vary per location. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, but in, in general, the, you can tell that the uh, trunk starts to flute, I would say right around two to three years old. So any tree that's like this big as a bonsai, if it's not floating, then it's a round one. Okay. Um, the other one is, does the soil need to have more akarama turf for moisture retention? Also, do you have any organic in the soil you use for this variety? For me, akadama and organic fertilizers go hand in hand. Uh, Akadama is so expensive and so hard to come by, so I don't use it on young trees. The soil mixture that we use, it's, it's phenomenal. I use it on all of my trees that have been in training for over 35 years. And in all of the YouTube videos that we do, whenever I repot a tree, you can see how much vigorous root there is actually on the root ball. Like this blonde or yellow, uh, really healthy roots, and so I t personally, I don't use Akadama um, unless I have, a, again, like a really, really old tree where I want to have the really, really fine ramification. That's when you want to switch to Akadama and the organic fertilizer. But that's the only case. Okay. And lastly, what propagation technique work best with Brazilian rain tree? Um, I have never, actually, I have seen a, a seed pod on a rain tree, but they need to be pretty old in order for them to produce the seed pods. Um, I don't know if mine would, uh, would make seed pods. I've never, I've never seen it on my rain tree, but it has about the age. Um, I heard that it's not successful growing rain trees from seeds. Like you plant 50 uh, seeds and maybe you get like two or three, so the success rate is not that high. I would go with uh, cuttings of anything that's thinner than my pinky. Anything larger than that, I would do uh, an air layer. Yeah. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this week's episode. And if you guys are interested in participating in my online crash course on Brazilian rain trees, uh, go ahead and check it out. I'm going to leave the uh, link below in the description. Yeah, and we do these live Q&As once a month. We're going to start doing it on Instagram, Facebook, and Zoom so we can see your tree. That's a cool thing. And if you would like to participate, just make sure you are following us so you get the invitation for it. And we hope to see you in the next one. Yes. Also, make sure that you like this video, that you subscribe to our channel, and we'll catch you guys next time.